Hey everybody, it's Lon Saib, and over the last couple of months we've been taking a look at these Ace Magic and Ace Magician mini PCs. They also have a few sub-brands here, like this Camruai. And the other day, a bunch of you wrote in to let me know about some news reports that many of these mini PCs have been infected with some kind of spyware from the factory. So I thought what we would do in this video is break down what is happening. We'll also take a look at the ones we previously reviewed and make sure that these machines don't have spyware on board. And I've got another one here that they sent me that I haven't yet started working on, so I figured we would boot this one up from scratch and see if there was anything nefarious installed on it. So we're gonna jump into this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that all of the mini PCs that we're talking about today were sent to the channel free of charge by Ace Magician, Ace Magic, whatever they call themselves these days. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it. So let's recap my history with this company. I've looked at four of their computers so far. This is mostly over the last year. This company kind of came out of nowhere. They just started reaching out to a bunch of low-level YouTubers like me to see if we might review their cheap computers. And of course, I love cheap computers. I know a lot of you do as well, so we got a bunch in. So we've looked at their laptop and their T8 Plus. I did give those away to viewers during one of my WhatNot streams, but I still have the AM6 Pro here and the Camru i Mini Gaming PC. By the way, in case you're wondering what I do with all this stuff, a lot of times local nonprofits might need something, so I give stuff to them, or I give things away to viewers every couple of months, and I'll have information about how you can learn about those giveaways as we get a little bit further into the video here. But we've got two left, and I did test those, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But let's talk about, first, what's been going on with this spyware issue here. So a YouTuber net guy got one of these mini PCs in for review. It looks like this one, but it's actually different. The way this company works, and many of these other mini PC companies too, is that they basically run through the market of commodity parts. And when they can put enough parts together to make a cheap computer, they make it. When the parts run out, they come up with a new model, and that's what's happened here. So I did not look at the one that he got that had spyware built into it, but he did the first analysis of what went on here. Then, of course, a bunch of articles followed. You can check out this one from Tom's Hardware that had a good breakdown of all the things that were discovered here. Basically, there was two execut executable files, NDEV and EDIDEV, and these had malware belonging to the Blada, Bindi, and Redline families which apparently steal passwords from browsers and wallets. They log keystrokes. This is not good stuff here. And it then sends all of that stuff back to a command and control server, most likely. And these were very easily detected, by the way, also, which is why we're going to run uh, some retail software to look for these things. It also said here that these machines came with Chrome pre-installed. And one of the things that I always look out for with mini PCs is what the first boot experience is like. And I can tell you, if I saw Chrome installed on any one of these mini PCs when I first booted them up, that would have stood out to me as a red flag because installing Chrome is one of the first things that I do. And I get very suspicious when software is pre-installed on these things. The reason is, is that back when I first started looking at mini PCs, a lot of these manufacturers were cutting corners and putting pirated or unactivated copies of Windows on the computers. And many times they would boot right up into an account as opposed to going through the setup process. All of these that I've looked at so far, and we'll see how this one fares, all went through the normal Windows setup process. Now, Ace Magic did release a statement to NetGuy about the virus issue, and they said that the virus software issue has been resolved in the current stock, and this is no longer going to be an issue in their current offerings. And apparently what's happened here is that uh, these computers were set up by a third party that imaged all of the drives that went into these computers. So they didn't have full control of the process, it looks like, which is certainly concerning. Now, what I did earlier is I booted up both of the computers I had in my possession, and I ran a couple of scans on them. One was a full scan with the malicious software removal tool from Microsoft. I also ran Hitman Pro from Sophos to see if anything popped up. All I got was tracking cookies from some browsing that I did. And then I also ran a full scan using Microsoft Defender. And in all of those cases, these computers here were totally clean after those results came back. 
Now, it doesn't mean they don't have something else installed on them. A few viewers did suggest that maybe we try to dump the UEFI BIOS. I am happy to do that if I can get some instructions as to how to best do that to send it over to people for analysis. But as far as I'm concerned, I think these two computers are looking okay to me. So that leaves this little guy, their AM20. This is powered by an AMD 7735H processor. And I have not booted this up at all, so I'm curious to see what that experience is like. This is kind of a neat machine, even beyond its processing capabilities. It has a phone charger here at the top, a wireless charger. So if you put your phone down on top of it, it'll charge. I'm not sure how well that will work for radio interference, but also heat, but hey, it's there. And then underneath it, you have three NVMe slots for expansion. So you can do quite a bit with this one from an expansion standpoint, which was why it was interesting to me. But they haven't had a lot of availability here, so I wanted to wait until you could actually get one to review it. So what we're going to do now is boot this up from scratch and see what happens, because I'm curious if there was anything nefarious installed on this, and we can see what the boot up procedure is when you first get it out of the box. Let's get to it. Now, of course, I couldn't find the power supply, so I had to plug in over its USB 4 port, but everything seems to be working okay here. And the good news is that we don't have a pre-installed version of Windows 11. We're going through the setup procedure here to get everything set up. So I'll just walk through this stuff here, and then next we should be asked to uh, get the updates and, of course, uh, get our password going. So I'm going to let this finish up, and when it's done, we'll come back and see what's next. All right, it just rebooted after some of its updates. It is not prompting me, though, for a Microsoft account. It's rather defaulting to a local one. In fact, the sticker that's on these computers uh, gives you some reference to that. And I'm just going to create my super memorable password here. And we'll get uh, the next step going here. i got to confirm the password again. And it's asking me now to create some security questions. So let me go through the rest of this and we'll see what the desktop looks like when it's done. All right, so this is the Windows desktop now after everything got updated. It is basically a blank slate here. I don't see Chrome installed. We'll go to the All Apps and just make sure it's not hiding in there. So it looks to be a pretty clean installation. We'll double check the uh, hard drive here, the C drive, and see if there's anything weird on there. We've got just about uh, 400 gigabytes free. And if I go through the program files here, you can see it's all pretty basic so far. But we could have things installed that we can't see. So let me go ahead and run some antivirus checks, the same ones we did on the other computers, and see if anything pops up. So I downloaded the Microsoft Malicious Software Removal Tool and Hitman onto this drive here. And I really like Hitman, actually, because it's from Sophos. It is free if you just run it as a scan, and it seemed like some folks online were pretty favorable about it. So we're going to run this real quick. It does, of course, prompt you to try to buy the big version there, but if you click on Next and just say, no, I just want to perform a one-time scan, it'll go through and start scanning everything. This test doesn't take all that long, um, so we can maybe just let it run here and see what it comes up with. Usually you'll get a lot of cookies and things that your web browser will pick up through the course of normal web browsing, but this one being a clean install here, which just started up, uh, doesn't have any of that. So you can see here that this test is concluding, and I think, at least as far as Hitman is concerned, uh, this machine is pretty much free and clear. So it's just going through some classifications here, and it says no threats found. Now, I did want to check on its activation status, so we'll take a look at that real quick. I'm on my system screen here. We'll go over to the product key and activation section here, and we can see that we have a activated copy of Windows 11 Pro. So, so far, so good. Let's take a look at the Microsoft Malicious Software Removal Tool and see if it finds anything. Now, on the same USB stick that I downloaded Hitman to, I also have the Malicious Software Removal Tool, so we'll go ahead and activate that. This is something that Microsoft offers. It's actually similar to how Hitman works, but it just looks for things a little differently. And we're going to click on Next here. And what I'm going to do is have it do a full scan. This does take a while, although on this machine it shouldn't take all that long because it 
doesn't have much on it. But I'm going to let this thing run, make myself some lunch, and when I come back, we'll see how it does. All right, the test has concluded, and if we look here, it says no malicious software was detected. We can go in and look at the detailed results of everything it looked for, and it found none of these things. Now, again, none of these tests are conclusive against everything, but at least for the types of things that were popping up with this incident, these tools would have detected that. But I'm going to run one more thing here, uh, which is the Microsoft Defender scan, and then we'll see how that does. All right, now this is concerning because I can't find Windows Defender anywhere on this machine. And if I go in and look for my virus and threat protection, I get this, that the page is not available and that my IT administrator has restricted or limited access to these things. But I am the administrator. My account is an administrator account. But whoever set up this installation of Windows 11 is not allowing it to be installed. The firewall is working. Everything else is on here properly. But that Windows Defender is not. And this machine came in after the other two that we just talked about. And also, of course, after the two that I have already given away. All of those machines did have Windows Defender installable and runnable. In fact, it was installed when the machine first booted up. But here, it doesn't let us get at it. So this might have been the start of that trend. And although we didn't find anything nefarious on this machine, at least with the scans that we ran on it, it does make me concerned that perhaps this is around the time, around the September, October time frame, where perhaps the quality level started to decline with the vendor that was installing the operating systems on the drives for them. So I am very concerned here about the lack of quality control on behalf of these Ace Magic, Ace Magician, and Cam Rui PCs. What I will be doing rolling forward is running extensive malware checks on all of these machines, regardless of manufacturer, to be sure that these things are safe to recommend. And just in playing around with this one, I'm pretty concerned about the fact that we can't even get Windows Defender running on it. And although we didn't detect anything nefarious, who knows what might be hiding at the kernel level if they were able to disable the ability to run Windows Defender even before the machine is booted up for the first time. Again, you've got these stickers on here that uh, give you some weird instructions about the default account versus the accounts that you set up with Microsoft. So the uh, flow of installation is very different on these. They are activating, so they are purchasing a license somewhere, but clearly they're not paying full price given how inexpensive these computers are. Some are under $200, many of them are. So I don't know where to go with this. So that's why I'm gonna put it out to all of you. Let me know in the comment section below. I always like to say, you, know, you, you kind of buy these at your own risk, and I've often been referring to that risk as mostly the support side, but I think I'm going to add a caveat that there's definitely some security concerns here too. Now, of course, wiping it out and installing your own version of Windows that you downloaded yourself might be one way to do it. Obviously, not running Windows at all and putting Linux on these might be one way to do it as well, but there could be things lingering in the BIOS too, so that's why I'm looking forward to getting some suggestions from you as to how we can pull the BIOS off and have some smart people, smarter people than me, analyze it. So let me know down in the comment section. This will be a follow-up for sure. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.